door fell off. Son of a bitch. The doorknob fell off. I'm gonna try and keep the chit chat to a minimum before we get into this. I'm 20 now. Can you believe that? <coughs> uh, I thought I would just tell you my experience and thoughts uh, turning into a 20 year old. My thoughts about the future and the past. This isn't really meant for my audience, although it is meant for my audience. Given that like 90% of them are real people that I know, this is for my audience. I am now 20 and it both feels like a huge yet meaningless milestone. Partially due to societal reasons, right? Like 21 is the big one, right? But also two decades. You know, I've been on this earth for two decades. It was, it's been pretty good so far relative to the worst life on planet earth. It's been pretty good relative to what I've yet to experience. It's pretty good. There definitely are problems in it that I would not like to be there. But you know, some of those are going away. I turned 20 and I have dyed hair, facial hair a little bit. I'm overweight and I got two tattoos. I just turned 20 and my family life is amp, but my, my friend life, it's very good. I love my friends. I just turned 20 and that means about 25% of my life is gone. The average life expectancy of a male is around 75. Uh, slowly declining as the years go by. But given the things that I've done, the, the, the choices that I've made in my life, I don't think I'm gonna make it to 75, but maybe I will. Either way, more or less, 25%, one fourth of my life is gone. Yeah, that's scary. I'm definitely scared. When I look back and where I am now, if I look at my life as a line with different dots on it, and there's a dot right there for the beginning and a dot right there for 20, and I see that, I see that chunk of the fourth gone. It is scary because I, I feel like I've done nothing. Even though I have done things, I've had a job. I traveled at some points in, the, in those two decades. I did, I, I went out of the state, who knew, in 20 years. I experienced great ups and horrific downs. I have lived, I have experienced and I have lived, but it is still scary because it feels like there, there's a thing that is yet to happen in my life where I can say, you know what? That's it. I've lived. And I feel like that's normal for a 20 year old, right? Cause we're 20. It's not like I'm 60 and I'm like, I just can't find that one thing that I needed for my life to call it a life. I'm 20, you know, even though a fourth of my life is gone, that still means that there is 75% to go through. There are still three times as much as I just did to live. I am scared to grow old, but here I am a 20 year old crying about growing old. I think it's, I think it is, I think it's appropriate because you never know when you're going to die. I could die tomorrow before this video even comes out. When I'm editing it, a brick flies off a truck and goes in my window and kills me right on my bed when my feetsies are, are flying in the air while I'm editing. I'm mostly making this for me actually, even though I am making it for y'all, I am making it for me to think about like, oh, what if in 10 years when I'm 30, I can look back at this video as a 20 year old and see what I thought about the world, you know, and how I thought about my position in my own life. Speaking of how I think about the world, um, it is very popular to be pessimistic today. I am very pessimistic about the world as many Gen Z years are. It is time to say goodbye to my teenager years. That I think is the most emotional for me because when I was younger, I, I was very much, the little annoying kid who couldn't be invited to the big kids. Whether they go out or eat at a table, the big kids table, whatever, I was not allowed. And you know what? Rightfully so. <laughs> as as a as a ex-teenager, I don't I don't know if I would have invited me to, me specifically. But I did have few moments in my life where the cool kid, the cool teenager, would invite me to things. And you know what? That was the best thing that would ever happen in my life are those moments because they're not adults. They're not corrupt ass adults and their brains aren't fully developed either. I always strived to be that character. The one who did and said mature things, sure, but never had a, a period of doubt with someone younger. Never made someone younger feel bad for being younger. I'm not a teenager anymore. I can't really do that. You don't really see a lot of 20 year olds going to like a middle school and being like, you know what kid, you're all right. Life goes on as it is. Again, I didn't think I would, there were, there were a few points in my life where I didn't think I'd make it to 20, but I'm at 20. So 
that's cool. This is just about what I learned in my past 20 years. Whether it be a friend from childhood who beat you senseless every day and you kept coming back because it was the only neighborhood friend you had. The friend that would pretend to be your friend for years until dropping you. The friend who weaponizes your past and makes assumptions about you in the present. There is always, always a way to cut them off. Always. You cannot surround yourself with those people. And it is a truly real thing where the type of person you are attracts the type of people that you come around. If you are attracting really unloyal, untrustworthy, and sleazy people, that is not only something you should disassociate from, it is something you absolutely need to look into with yourself. Whether it be you are as sleazy as them or, you know, your, your life experiences have tailored you to be susceptible to these kind of people. Either way, you got to figure it out so it can stop. And you got to surround yourself with the right people. This is advice that has been given out for eons and yet... <sighs> so many people don't listen. Like me. Sorry, I went to a concert a couple days ago and now I'm sick. You know you. And if there's something that you don't agree with with your friend, whether they say a word you don't like or an opinion that you find inhumane, speak up, bruh. You're your own damn self. All right, speak up for yourself, please, please. Oh, and I know this might go against what I just said, but always accommodate. Really, really do try to stay open-minded. Again, I I'm giving you like two very different pieces of advice that kind of seem like they clash with each other, but they don't, they can coexist is what I'm saying. If you're ever mad at somebody, whether it be somebody you know or somebody you don't know, you, I always think about their situation. If I was mad that a friend ghosted me and then ignored me, you, you gotta think of it in their perspective. Maybe they were having a tough time, they were busy, or they also had social anxiety. And instead of being a mature, responsible adult, they ignored you. Now, even though you might be mad because this is not the way that we're supposed to act, right? We left high school years ago. We could stop acting like this. I see it all the time though. That is an obstacle that they are dealing with that eventually, hopefully, they will get over and there's nothing really you can do to help them. If they, if they don't change it, you're not gonna change it for them. Enjoy life, seriously enjoy life. Literally, so many times I will put on earbuds or maybe I won't, and I'll go outside and I'll look at the sky and I'll look at the tree line and I'll, I'll breathe. Literally, it sounds simple and stupid, but it's real. It is so mind baffling to me that the one thing that we can all do on autopilot, the one thing that you shouldn't be told to do, breathing, helps us so damn much. When I'm overwhelmed, close my eyes, give like a couple deep breaths, it literally does calm me down. It's so weird how something that simple can do something so effective. And yet everybody always does it, but not properly. And they always forget to do it in times of crisis. So that's why you always got to remember to breathe. Uh, breathe. I am now 20 and that means everything and nothing. So I'll see you guys later. Here's to another decade. I'll be a completely different person. Uh, but thank you for watching. My name is Gusty. And um, keep on keeping on. I think that was a good send off. You know? And in a lot of ways. Um, it's like I never left. Welcome back. Hello. Okay, bye. <laughs>